Good morning. So today we're going to be talking about some excerpts from this book, Modern Horror. All right, so it's available on Amazon, and she said a couple things in there that I really appreciated. One, uh, I gotta find this again, just one moment. Sex workers know their worth. Fuck for free? I'm not an idiot. Love that. I do not think women should fuck for free. I think you should get something of value, preferably a relationship. But if you don't have that, a sugar daddy. Do not fuck for free, ladies. It's just not in our best interest. Another one. Sex workers are fiercely independent. Don't ever tell me what to do. Unless we're in bed, Daddy. Love that. Now, uh, she also had another really fun part. And I'm listening to this one on Audible, by the way. Uh, where she writes, and I, I wrote this down verbatim, but don't quote me exactly. I might have had a word or so off. Um, she was talking about how she was laying in bed with one of her clients and she this was just at the end of her career because she's not a sex worker anymore and um he's telling her that it's going to be hard for her to date although she actually has a boyfriend which he didn't know and he's like it's going to be hard for you to meet someone you know because men don't like women who are he didn't want to say the word prostitutes so he said the word escort like women like you and she, her take, and she didn't say this to him, was like, yeah, men don't respect women who take life by the tits and live according to their own wishes for the sake of learning more about herself. Men don't like a self-realized woman who doesn't need a man, but may come to him out of her own volition when she feels genuine love and warmth. Men do not want a woman who will not stay out of duty or loyalty to a tyrant or an unrealized ideal. A woman who will not settle because she is afraid of getting older or being alone. No, a man doesn't want a woman who operates outside of what a woman can do for him. Now, I don't actually believe all of that exactly, but the point is that... Not every man likes a woman who's like really independent, who's like, I don't need a man, but I want a man. And things have really changed, you know, because um, uh, a woman doesn't have to stay with a man anymore who's a tyrant or an unrealized ideal, who doesn't want to contribute to the relationship or make her feel warm and desired. She can leave. And that's a good thing. And a lot of men in the comments are really upset that women can divorce. Yes, they can. And guess what, guys? It means you've got to be on your best fucking behavior. It means you actually have to be in the relationship. You can't just marry a woman and think that you own her, uh, that she's just some object, and that now that you got her, you can just kick back, ignore her, get your dick sucked, and go off to work and hang out with the boys or whatever. You've got to actually be involved in the relationship. You've got to be relational, you know, and it's not easy to get a woman anymore because we earn our own money now. So we don't need you for financial support, which is good. It means that it means that we're independent. It means that we don't need you, but we want you. See, the worst thing for a guy is a woman who needs you financially because then she's just with you because she's helpless and she's needy. And, um, you know, a lot of men like that. Everybody likes different things, you know. Some men like women who treat them like crap. But I really like what she says because a lot of the women that I know who are in the industry and who are sex workers, they're very independent. They're very empowered. They make their own money. They hardly work at all. They always have money. They're really empowered. They have really good boundaries. And they, um, they go through life on their own terms, you know, and I really like that. And I really stand for women um, appreciating men, uh, but not needing a man 
to make her feel complete financially, emotionally, or sexually. That's really a key thing. And that way we can come together because we want to be together. And a lot of people are not even getting married anymore. Or they're like, okay, do I want to be with you? Because I like you like every day. Let's figure out, do we really want to do this thing together? You know? So yeah, I really like that. And I have been, I haven't dated anyone in 10 years. I have not dated anyone. In 10 years because I I totally get this because I don't need a man I don't need a man anymore to provide for me to give me children you know but I need men in a, in a social way right like I definitely need men f for my work in a social way I need men to because they repair the buildings and they built the streets like we need men in our society but I don't need a boyfriend I don't need a husband anymore and that's where I divorced my husband. I also wrote a sex book called The Fuck List. Let me show you. Okay, this is it, The Fuck List. And then I did a rewrite because a lot of, I wrote this book for women. A lot of them were like, I can't be seen with this book in my, in my house. My husband will freak out. Like they were ashamed. And I was ashamed of carrying around a book called The Fuck List myself. So I did a rewrite called What I Did for Sex. And this one's actually, I think, a lot of a better book because I named all the chapters according to like what was in the chapter, you know? And I made sure that I covered everything, um, like my experiences, but also um, different things about ED, about men who masturbate, about booty calls, the first time I pegged the guy, um, whether I could fuck two men on the same day, the connection between my heart and my pussy, open eye orgasm, can a woman ask a man out, ghosting, the bad girl meth, my neediness, like it's just a really good book. And people have told me I should make like an audible of it. But I'm like, this book was written in like 2017. When did I write this one? It's like not even current anymore. And I don't know if anyone, yeah, anyone would really be interested in a book from that old. Then I thought I could read it aloud and p make it for my YouTube for like in the membership area. So people could listen to it there. But I don't know if anybody really wants to listen to it. And I feel like... I should write a new book. I actually have started on a new book, which is a book about my work, um, working, um, you know, as a provider, in-person provider. Um, so I kind of started on that, but I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. And I'm like, would I put my name on it? Not put my name on it. Would I merge it with this book, The Fuck List, or not? Um, you know, and then I was like, what should I call it? The hooker with family values or I'm such a whore or <laughs> I don't know. Um, I really, the, my views on sexuality are that it has to be intentional and consensual and have healthy boundaries and has to be embodied. In my, this is my view of sexuality um, that I'm opposed personally to any sex that is indiscriminate um, dissociated, non-consensual, not enjoyable. And I personally am, uh, uh, I'm personally into monogamy. I'm not into cheating, but you know, in my work with men, I have often seen, I have sometimes seen men who were married, but I will say that the, it was very rare that I ever saw a man who was married um, and who was just looking for variety that was pretty rare and I don't like I didn't like those guys at all coming to me but I had a lot of compassion for the men whose wives were just not interested in them sexually anymore and these guys were good in bed because she was just busy with the kids or she was bored with him or she, you know she lost her drive in her 60s you know after menopause or an illness and some of these guys hadn't had sex in years and they they felt like um, having another place to go gave them see men can compartmentalize sex um, it's kind of like say that you're married to a woman and she doesn't cook she doesn't cook for you but you love her 
you you might go out to a restaurant to get some food, but you're not going to leave her for the chef at the restaurant. And that's how a lot of men see sex. They're like, okay, um, because I got this affection and this sensuality and this kissing and this nourishing interaction and I got the sexual interaction, I feel fulfilled. And now I, I'm a happier husband for my wife. See, that's what they do. They don't fall in love with the, with the escort. Some do, but it's pretty rare. I think they would have to be really unhappy at home because these men would rather have sex with their wives. I don't know if they're just bad in bed or what's going on. I, I would love to talk to women. This is my thing. I would love to talk to women. If there are any women watching my video, I would love to hear from you. If you don't like sex with your husband, why? This is what I want to know. Because there's a reason these women are not having sex with their husbands. Like, it's a natural thing. We're sexual beings. And men especially need sex more than women do in general. Okay, there are relationships where the women want sex more than the man. But generally, the men want sex more than the women do. And they need it. And I think women need to realize that they need it. And because so many are not getting it, there's this huge market. You should go on some of the escort ads. Just type escort whatever city and all the ads come up. I would stay on reputable sites, by the way. Don't stay on. Um, I'm not going to give advice how to find someone. You'll have to do that on your own. But there are a lot of them. Like there are tens of thousands of them. Like thousands in every city for massage or dominatrix or whatever you want. Because men have that need. Now, a lot of people will go, well, men pay for it because women can get it for free. But why? This goes back to a lot of the videos I've made about why women are more choosy. And all my friends that I have that are, in, uh, that are providers, they don't do full service. They don't want to do full service. They don't want to fuck some random guy. They will do the massage with the endings, but they will not do the full service. Because it's very rare for a woman to be able to offer a full service to a guy she's not attracted to. We're just more choosy. That's it. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, it kind of takes like an extraordinary uh, set of circumstances for a woman to be willing to have sex for money. Okay? I think they have to either do it from a place of like Tantra or from a place of love. Or they have to dissociate. You know, those are like two ways that I think that women do it. Um, but anyway, uh, I really recommend that book. Um, what was it called again? The Modern Whore. Um, and I guess that um, I follow her on Twitter. I guess that she's just, they're coming out with, um, um, oh, Okay, yeah, it came out in February 2022, but now she's also doing some kind of a movie. Uh, there's a movie. Bell Media announces, yeah, so you can follow her on Twitter at Modern Whore, and um, yeah, I just really, really think it's great for when women love to have sex, but again, it has to be you know, consensual, like, I don't know any women that are just DTF, like, women are just not built for that, you know, so, uh, yeah, and there's some women who are like, I don't give a shit what society thinks, I, I will tell you this too, since we're talking about sex, um, there are, um, there's a lot of shaming around sexuality, especially by religion, especially by the Mormon religion and the Catholic religion, which is very bad. Like we are, we got to be in touch with our animal spirits. But again, it has to be intentional. And I will tell you that, um, you know, the best sex really is if you're in a relationship with someone you're really into and you like the first couple of years. And after that, it can get kind of, it's like anything. Would you want to eat lentil soup every day? I mean, it's really great. Like, I, I, I order the purple carrot. I do the purple carrot, but I'm starting to get really bored with it. Or gyms, you know, or grocery stores. Like, I think we as humans, we crave novelty. We crave variety. 
And when you're in a long-term relationship, you always have sex the same way the guy, the, the divorce guy, James Sexton, he talks about that in this his book, how people get really bored with each other sexually because they have a routine. You know, Thursday nights after the kids go to bed, but before we take a brush our teeth or whatever, you know, like the same position, we know exactly how it's going to go. It's very predictable. It gets very boring. So you have to be able to bring some novelty into it with your partner. Just do something different. It requires taking like a little bit of risk. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, check out my book, The Fuck List, or check out her book. Where did I find it? Uh, the Modern Whore. Just a second. Where is it? The Modern Whore. Yeah, okay, this is from her Twitter. The Modern Whore, my book, The Fuck List. And thank you for watching my video.